Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Regina, and I am the Chief of Staff to Matt Mashari, CEO Coach. Today, I want to do a quick walkthrough on the importance of maintaining a wiki for your company. First things first, I think it's important to talk about why you need a wiki. Um, there are a lot of companies that I think function for a really long time, um, just focusing on building product, which is super important in the very beginning. Um, however, eventually you will hit a point where you're going to hire people um, and potentially hire many people. Um, and at that point, it's really important to no longer just keep information in your brain, um, especially parts of the company that are relevant for everyone to know. So the entire purpose of a wiki is to centralize all of the data that you have into one place so that it becomes very easy for everybody in the company to navigate and find those crucial pieces of information that will allow them to do their very best work. So that's why it's important to have a wiki. You might be wondering now, well, what goes into a wiki, right? And so in my opinion, um, and based on what I've seen other operations and chiefs of staffs uh, do over, you know, the course of my time as a chief of staff, as well as in my previous uh, roles, what I've noticed is everybody tries to go for evergreen material. Um, and what that is defined as is essentially um, anything that will pretty much be true for a really long period of time. It's not so, supposed to be a working doc of any kind, although I'm sure there are times when you're workshopping uh, pages in a wiki. Um, but in a nutshell, you're thinking about it sort of like it's evergreen material in that um, you're not gonna change it very often and it might need just little bits of maintenance. So that includes company FAQs, that includes um, maybe areas of responsibility that you maintain um, and update once a quarter. So there are components in the wiki that you do have to update from time to time, but it's basically a centralized place where it's really easy to find those pieces of information whether you're at the company for a really long time and you just need a refresher or if you're a brand new employee trying to navigate your way through a company that's a little bit about why you need a wiki and what kind of information goes into one and so what i'm going to do is do a quick tour through the way that we do it um, with the Mashari method. Uh, as you can see, I've got my Notion page pulled up here. Um, we are a small company. We're less than 10 people, which is awesome. Um, and so for that reason, we wanted to use something that was going to be easy to maintain and something that wasn't too complex for our company size as well as our company stage. Um, Notion seems to be a really great um, tool for a lot of small companies as they're starting to get all of those pieces of information to drop somewhere um, for future employees and also just to have it documented somewhere. Um, in my research and my chats with other chiefs of staffs, it seems like once you hit the 50 person um, company size or anything larger than that, it makes more sense to navigate towards something that's a little bit more robust. And for that reason, I noticed that a lot of people use Confluence as their uh, central source of wiki. I've seen companies as large as 4,000 people companies that use Confluence, and I'm sure that there are many more companies with larger company sizes who uh, use Confluence as well. The tool that you use is not as important as how you use it and how uh, well you maintain it. So um, that's the caveat there. But yes, we did hours in Notion and I'd like to give you a tutorial on that. So as you can see in my workspace right here, I have this main page called Machari Method Home. And so um, when people first join the company, I'll just go ahead and hide this really quickly. This is all they see. They have their workspace. Sometimes it's toggled like that. And as you can see, there are a lot of pages in here. On the sidebar in Notion, I like that when you untoggle it, it shows you all the pages that live in there. And this is actually the first point where I notice a lot of companies maybe have a little bit messier of a wiki. Um, it's really important to utilize this sidebar and keep things very, very clean. And so if you look at hours, everything is pretty much broken down into function. Um, and so right here at the bottom, we have 
coaching and engineering and product and design because these are our major components of the Mashari method. Of course, coaching is because Matt is a coach and I've started coaching and so much of our company runs around coaching. And so that's the first function that we've got listed there. And of course, we're also a very engineering product design focused company because we are developing software. So in that case, it's really important to have EPD find their documents really easily as well. And then from there, you've got the people HR um, function along with operations, which um, I also uh, oversee and then customer success. So the coaches that we work with, um, finance, things like investing into all of the other companies. And then these two last um, pages right here, you've got processes, which is where we document all of the how to's that um, make the company function as well as any miscellaneous documents. I really like it being this clean because as I mentioned over here, it becomes really easy and simple for somebody to find what it is that they're looking for. So if somebody is looking for information around coaching, they'll know that they can click in there and we treat all the pages in there as sort of like subfolders. So rather than thinking about these pages as pages, it's um, I think a lot easier to think of them as folders that you store all of the information in. So that's a little bit about the functions thing at the bottom. Sorry, I went a little bit backwards. I'm going to come back up to the top. So over here, I've got a quick link section, and this is basically all of the stuff that we reference pretty regularly. So product brainstorm, of course, is um, all of the thoughts and ideas we have around uh, product, our software product at least. Um, and then we have CEO's feedback for um, people that have tried our product and are beta testing it. So the CEOs that we coach frequently give us feedback and we want a centralized place to track all of that. But one quick thing is that you can see that these are quick links and they're not the actual page itself we just created a link because there's a little arrow there that's a cool kind of notion function and so these are just referencing um, another page somewhere else the same thing happens over here and then all of these don't have the arrow because these are actually not stored in notion um, we actually store these um, off of Notion given that they're living documents. So our OKR tracker, for example, this is this lives in a Google Sheets for us. Um, I'll do a separate video on how we do OKRs as well as AORs areas of responsibilities at a later time. This is focused, this video is focused on wikis. And then we have our internal version of the tool. We have our GitLab as well as Figma mockups. And so as you can see, the things that we keep in quick links are things that people need to reference quite often. Um, and it's designed this way because when we have new employees join, they probably wanna know which pages we reference a lot, which ones are the most uh, important for them to get acquainted with and familiarized with so that they can do their jobs very well. Uh, so that's a little bit about quick links. And then I have this reference section, MM Wikis. Um, that kind of breaks down what our company is about at a very high level. Um, so there are a couple of other companies I know through um, the companies that Matt coaches where they actually save a section for like town halls and events and things like that. Usually um, when I'm thinking about these companies, they um, tend to keep it on a bigger platform like Confluence uh, because they have so many people. Um, uh, but it could be useful also for this page to sort of be a, here's everything you need to know about um, what's going on in the company right now. Because again, we're such a small team, um, it's pretty simple at the moment. We've got our about page as well as our core principles, the values that we live by, which are you know, a work in progress. And when I say live by, I mean, obviously while we're working, um, but hopefully what we believe in even outside of work as well, because we want those two things to be in harmony. That's the coaching side of me coming out right now. Um, and so now I'm going to click into it. I know I've done a lot of talking around the homepage. Um, I just think it's really important to have this be very clean. Um, and so I'm gonna click into one of the functions. This is our coaching function. And as you can see, we've got evergreen resources. These are uh, things that we uh, reference quite often. And then I've got a special ops component section here. This might be a little bit confusing for people once they first see it because they might think, Regina, you have a whole page dedicated just for operations. What's the difference between operations versus coaching? And it's a really good question. 
um, and I suppose I should clarify it to the team, but we have uh, an ops component for specifically our coaching stuff. So that's things that um, Matt does with his coaches, and we have operations components there. And the operations here is specifically related to our software team. As I mentioned, we're coaching, but we're also building software, which is why we have an EPD team. Um, and so that operations uh, page is more for engineering product design related operations work. Um, and so every single one of these pages um, has a little blurb at the very top. And I think this is actually really important to have an about this doc um, so that if somebody clicks in and they're like, what is this? They immediately have context and they also know who's maintaining the page. So that's an example of an about this doc. Each of these pages has like a short one to three sentences of what it's about. And then it might even contain extra um, links uh, that are helpful for a person to get a little bit more context. And so here's another example of another page. And so if I click into it, you'll see because this is like a full table, for example, there's a lot of information up here. I make sure that I highlight stuff so that people can see it and so on. So that's how I maintain the internal pages. And the same thing is true here. So obviously we've got documentation, learnings, and things like that. Some of these are references. So as you can see here, engineering is very closely related to product and design. So we make sure that we keep a link there. Um, the, the point here is to make it as easy as possible for people to, um, to, to access things quickly that they're going to need to reference pretty often. And then, you know, I get a question quite often of what you do when pages become deprecated. I don't like throwing away or deleting things permanently because there's there's a bit of permanence attached to that and I don't think it hurts to keep things around as long as they're clearly marked as deprecated. And so I'll click back into coaching, for example. And as you can see, there's like a little archive toggle that I made here. I usually keep it a little bit lower so it doesn't confuse people, but in case somebody is looking for something, they can go ahead and click into it and they'll see what, um, uh, what it is and they'll see that it's been marked as deprecated so they know okay this is no longer a maintained document or something that's up to date but I can go and click in take a look at the version history and you can easily do that by going there clicking on the three dots here and then looking at page history over here so um, they can see oh when was this page last updated uh, why was it deprecated usually it says something like that um, so you can see here, for example, I have in my archive something, but I put a really big note at the very top as to why it's deprecated. So um, that's a little bit about how we handle each page. Um, product and design, I think this is like one of the most important pages we have. Um, it's mostly because, like I said, so much of our um, of our work is around EPD. And so this page gets visited quite often. And as you can see, they've got documentation and they've got planning for around product. And then uh, we were doing a product refresh. And so we we're writing out a bunch of docs for version two. Um, I don't know that this would necessarily be considered as a wiki for many larger companies. Actually, in fact, I would advise against it as you grow past 50 people, you just want a centralized place for um, evergreen content. And then from there, uh, I would recommend using something else. You can use Notion, um, but I would connect it to like Google Docs or another platform where you can easily write um, and sort of have all of your running thoughts. Um, but because we are a small company, any, any company smaller than 50 people, I think, can continue using this pretty comfortably um, and having working docs within their Notion workspace. Um, and so I think it's really helpful because you've got your wiki along with other things that are, are active, um, are, that are active, right? Uh, active pages. So that's a little bit there. Um, I can also, I should note, most of these pages are... Um, viewable by the entire team. Of course, you can configure it so that it's shared 
Um, here, you can also hide certain pages. So for example, our people HR page is shared with the entire team, but for example, hiring usually contains some sensitive information. And if you're a workplace that doesn't want to share some of the sensitive information across the board, um, it's possible to configure it so that your shared uh, is um, done on a case by case basis. Um, the reason that we don't uh, share this with the entire team is because we have live pages here. So obviously all of these here are actually um, live and, and published to the web. And so we just don't want there to be a mistake and somebody deletes something on accident. Um, so that's a little, that's like one con of using Notion is that it's really easy to like move pages into other pages on accident or even delete stuff. Um, there have been many a time in my uh, time using Notion, whether it's here or at my last role, where somebody accidentally deletes something, um, which can be very problematic if you're a really, really large company and the more people you have kind of in their um, messing with pages or like using the tool, the more chances there are for something like that to happen. So um, yeah, that's a little bit about that. And then we have evergreen resources, like I said, uh, for each of these pages. So for example, social info, this is something I really love keeping in the wiki. Um, we make sure everybody writes something about themselves. And we also have like a superficial spreadsheet where everybody kind of writes down who they are, what their Enneagram type is, what their phone number is, where they live and with whom. It, makes for connecting with other people on a superficial level really easy so that when you go and you're having meetings you already have something to talk about so that's pretty helpful as well and we keep it as a, in as a link in our wiki so that people can easily access that information in fact i think it's so important that i've linked it over here as part of reference material so if somebody were joining the company brand new for the first time they could just go and look at this page and say oh okay here are a lot of really good links um, and i'm just going to get curious and i'm going to go and click around and take a look at things i do want to click into processes because i think this is a really important page to have i've broken down our processes page into two sections so you've got the how to so these are things that um, we've written out. So if you're doing something more than uh, once, it's usually good to write out the process. This ties specifically to good practice for areas of responsibility or AORs. And so uh, for every um, sort of major responsibility we have that ties to an OKR, you want to make sure that not only is there one DRI or directly responsible individual who's handling that task, but you want there to be a backup as well. And so for many of my tasks in the very beginning, um, my tasks uh, had me as the DRI, but I had my EA Trish as my backup. And so I started documenting a bunch of stuff um, and started creating things here. As you can see, our designer Colleen has also added a couple and our uh, engineer uh, Felipe has also added a couple. So that's a little bit about the how-to section. Um, as I think about stuff, I'll usually write it down and mark it for me to finish it at a later date. Um, you're going to find eventually that there's just so many how to's to write that you, you just can't write all of them. Um, luckily, there are a lot of tools that you can use. Again, not going to get into that for this uh, video because this is about the wiki. Um, but in a nutshell, you can use video recording software like Loom and you can also use tango.us to track all of your mouse clicks so that it quickly writes out a tutorial for you that saved me hundreds of hours. So that's a little bit about the how to section and then glossary. Um, when someone new starts at a company, it's really important for there to be shared vocabulary. Part of shared vocabulary creates a sense of belonging and it also makes people feel a little bit less discombobulated. It also creates a little bit of tribalism for better or for worse because people then feel like there's a shared vocabulary. And so I started this glossary page just in case people were trying to get acquainted with what you know sort of language we were using to discuss certain things. Um, 
one of the things, for example, that I can give you as an, uh, as a, an anecdote is this um, one-on-one. And, and most people think of one-on-ones as like just quick sync meetings, 30 minutes long between a manager and a direct report. However, we actually define one-on-one very differently at Mashari Method. So Matt has defined one-on-ones as actual coaching sessions, which is very different from a 30-minute sync. So um, uh, in our definition at Mashari Method, a one-on-one is a meeting that is likely an hour and a half to two hours long, and it includes a full breakdown of how the direct report is doing. We dig into all of the issues, and that direct report essentially gets a coaching session, and these usually happen once a month. Um, that's very different from a sync, where a sync is what people normally define as one-on-ones. Um, they're about 30, 20 to 30 minutes long, and it's just to get aligned on priorities and to make sure that nobody is blocked. So as you can see, super important to have a glossary so that people know kind of what you're talking about. This becomes especially more important as the company grows in size. So I do think it's important to have somewhere where you store shared vocabulary and that's super helpful in a wiki. Um, And let me think, what else do we have? Miscellaneous docs is sort of a catch-all for any documents that don't fit nicely in any of these uh, functions. And so, for example, my chief of staff write-ups are stored here. I do write them um, because I enjoy writing and it's mostly for my own um, sort of self-expression as well as um, just writing down somewhere uh, my journey as a chief of staff. But it's so tied to Mashari Method, and I do write a lot of these write-ups based on Matt's writings and what I've learned while talking to other coaches, other CEOs, and other chiefs of staffs. And so I prefer to keep it here because it's so tied together. And so because it doesn't really fit in operations or coaching or you know software development, I started miscellaneous docs. And so I, this can get really quickly out of hand uh, if you are a growing company. I wouldn't recommend it, um, uh, especially stored in a wiki if you're 50 people or more, but it's a nice catch-all um, when you're small so that you can decide later on, oh, I actually need to create a new folder for this, or oh, this should be stored in Google Drive, for example, if you're using that. So. Um, that's a little bit about our wiki. As you can see, it's broken down by function. You've got all the quick links you need. Every page should have a description on uh, what the page is about over here. Any further context that might help, uh, who it's maintained by, if there are other, um, uh, you know, um, uh, sort of tools or, or uh, helpful tips. You can write those and, and highlight them. I think that's always really helpful. Um, and I think that's basically it. You know, finance for us, it's we, we do invest in companies that we coach. And so finance is a little bit different for us versus other companies, but we store all of the documents here so that anybody in our team can go and see at any point who have we invested in, how much have we invested, who are we talking to, who said yes, who do we have contracts with, who else are we in LP for, and so on and so forth. So that all that information is there. Um, and I think that's basically it. So the last thing I wanted to talk about is why it's important to have a wiki, um, or uh, why, why it's important, like what are the most important parts of having this wiki? And so I like to think of it in three steps. I think the first one is to make it really simple to find the information that you need. Um, I think Notion does an especially good job of this because you can simply command K and type in any of things that you're looking for and it'll search the whole workspace. That's super helpful for a wiki. I think the quick find up here is really helpful as well. Um, I think that there are also really nice search features on Confluence if you're a bigger company. Um, And so making it simple to find things is really important. So that's also why a Google Doc, for example, wouldn't work really well as a wiki. it's difficult to search across the board and click into many different documents to find what you're looking for. And for that reason, I would stay away from simple word processor pages as a wiki. Um, 
but however you choose to structure it, make sure it's really simple to find things. The second one is to make sure that all the documents that are in your wiki are relevant. So um, like I mentioned, we have quick links here as a good example for um, why it's important uh to to have these links here and why it's important for people to look at the wiki um you want to make it relevant to the people who are searching for it because if you build a wiki and it looks really clean and it looks really nice and it's visually uh, uh like it's aesthetically pleasing but people can't um find the things that they're actually looking for and the things that they see are not relevant they're not going to use it so that's the second thing um you want to in in this in a similar vein you want to make sure that your wiki is not overwhelming i've seen some wikis where they're just pages and pages and pages of content and it's not stored in something that's as clean as this and so for that reason you want to make sure that you're not storing irrelevant content in your wiki so make sure that it's relevant so number one make sure that it's simple to find things number two make sure that's relevant and number three this is the final piece and the overarching theme that i've heard in all of my research um, i think it's really important to make it easy to maintain so whoever is the DRI for maintaining the wiki page, it's it's important that they know how to use it. So if you hire someone, let's say you hire an EA and you ask them to maintain your wiki um, and, and you're doing all sorts of crazy things in Coda, for example, or Confluence and it's just a mess and there's, or maybe there's just no DRI, right? Maybe somebody nobody made it clear who was supposed to maintain stuff things will very quickly start to unravel you'll start having information in many different places you'll maybe get some strong characters that go i'm just going to try to maintain you know this section and then you end up with a vastly different um sort of uh, uh end product with other people who are trying to maintain it their way so make sure that there's somebody like one person who's responsible for maintaining the whole wiki um usually that person is you know a director of communications internal communications that person could be hr until you are large enough to get a, a comms person it could be an operations generalist who is very familiar with all the different pieces of the org um could even be an ea the whole point here is that whoever is maintaining it now whether it's you as a ceo or you as a chief of staff or someone else whenever you bring on that person make sure that you have them shadow you and make sure that they have mind melding with you so that they know how you think and they know how you make decisions um in maintaining the docs um it's also important that they touch base with the right people um so for example if something in the product design page is out of date um they should know who to talk to to make sure that it's maintained and and up to speed or let's say that there's a page that doesn't have like this you know one sentence about um the project or or whatever right um i'm gonna click back into this as an example um maybe it's just not um clear and so that person who's maintaining this wiki should know who to contact uh, so that's really important so those are the three things make it simple to find things make sure the content is relevant and make sure it's easy to maintain wh whatever tool you end up using so that's it about wikis and I hope that you learned something from this video. Um, let me know what you end up using. Feel free to share your wiki setup. Um, I think it's best when we all share what we're up to and learn from each other. So I hope to see you again next time. Bye.